genuine Lotus parts. It was a supercharger pulley for a, you know, an Exige style supercharger. Welcome back to the world's most lethargic engine swapping channel. This week we're going to be looking at putting some genuine sporty Lotus parts in the car. Pretty sure they're actually just Toyota parts, but they came from a Lotus dealer apparently. We're going to look at the cooling, going to keep looking at the wiring, see where we get to. Let's crack on. Alright, so first things first, let's take a look at the little cooling system. What we have here is a fancy new tool which I've kind of been looking at here and there for a little while. Now this is a Chinese special. It's a, it's a tubing roll that looks like puts bead on tubing. Uh, you can get something which looks, I'm gonna say, exactly the same on Demon Tweaks for about 20 quid more. This was 130 quid, I think. And it's super simple. It's got this little roller here, which deforms the tube. This which accepts it, and you just steadily clamp it down like so and turn turn it round with the handle in a vice so I think without further ado let's put a little roll in a bit of tube and we'll have a look and then I'll make up all the bits required for the cooling system which isn't too many it's like maybe three little almost joiners out of some alley tube so let's have a look thing is cutting silicon hoses. I need to cut this down a little bit. This is my 35 to 32 mil reducer to take the block to the radiator on the top hose. Now what I've done is I've put, you can see this isn't straight, this is bad, this is how you cut badly. What I've done is I've put some tape all the way around in a nice straight line. I'm going to take a junior hacksaw and I'm just going to make sure I cut nicely along the tape line. Now I find that the junior hacksaw is really good for this because it's got smaller teeth so they tend to catch on the reinforcing uh, like thread that's inside the hose a bit less and you can just keep an eye on where we're cutting to keep it in line and you can rotate and again it's junior so it just nibbles through quite nicely. Now, after that, see it's a bit it's a bit fluffy, you can brush that off. To be honest, not terrible. A bit underexposed, but just if you're a bit of a tile like me and you want it to look nice, because you will see this. Just get a lighter and just go around. Don't set fire to your tape, but it just singes off any of the leftover bits. There's probably a better way of doing this. This is just the way that I do it. It doesn't look too shite. Sort of tidy it up a bit, but. Yeah. That is how I cut the hoses. I don't think it looks too, too bad. It doesn't look as good as a factory cut. I'm not sure how they do that. Probably a sharp standing knife works quite well with this as well. But yeah, just been mucking around. Thought I'd share that one. Let's go put some stuff in the car. So there it is, all cut. And you see, they look quite nice where they're trimmed. All pretty neat, no clips on. And that's just a 32 to 35 reducer. It's a little bit tight on that bend. But all in all, 
it's looking good and hopefully I've got a 90 on the way for this and it'll just about clear. Might need a bit of squizzling around, but that's that. Ignore this absolute mess. We're gonna look at that in a bizzle. On to the next job, I think. Right, I figured I'd do a quick a status update because I for one feel like this is starting to take forever. And I know that it probably seems like I'm just doing all these little tiny jobs and the videos are dragging on, but this is the reality of it. Um, so these are not in order particularly as a loose order but I thought I'd write them down so I can just start ticking them off one by one and making sure that I'm not just flitting around from job to job even though that's pretty good for the old motivation to keep mixing up I just need to start crashing these out so we've done the coolant hoses I'm actually going to leave the bottom hose it's a bit of a funky shape if there's any issue with it I'll change it for the silicon tubes that are lying around over there but I still need to put all of the hose clips on and I need to sort something out with an expansion tank. I was considering having to go alley world in one myself, but we'll see. I've got to 3D print the intake properly. Anyone who watched the older episodes will know that it didn't go particularly perfectly. Uh, and I'm also waiting on a silicon bend for that. Uh, the shifter is pretty much complete. I've literally just got to clearance that ex the extender piece a little bit so that it shifts properly so that maybe we'll do today front mount not intercooler uh, i posted on instagram if you don't follow me go and have a look it's, it's the same as the youtube channel just with some underscores and everyone sort of thought i was going to be supercharging the car because of something we will cover later but i need to just finish welding up that front mount now that it's all stuck in the car from last episode uh, the CV boot clips which popped last episode need replacing. Throttle cable, I, uh, I pulled the Aris one out thinking I was going to use the Celica one. Turns out I actually need to use the Aris one, so I've got to run that back in and sort it out. I hacked through the bonnet catch when I was cutting the car up, uh, the cable for it. So I need to get a cable for it or maybe I'll just run some pins. Hashtag full race car. Uh, power steering, we're going to be looking at that in a minute. Not a supercharger pulley or yeah, maybe deleting of power steering, flipping and flopping between those two choices, left, right and centre. I'm sticking the battery in the boot, I've got the cool little lightweight Odyssey and I've got some cable to run it to there. Wiring, dreading that. It's pretty much all sort of lashed in there, I've just got to start actually taking some big boy brave pills and hacking out stuff that I definitely don't need and splicing. Uh, what actually needs to be before these, I need to do the clutch slave, so I need to whip the one out of the Celica. Salika, whatever you want to call it, uh, because it roots around the six speed box, whereas the Yaris one uh, does not. So I need to swap them over, and then that will need bleeding as part of this fluids change. So that'll be oil for gearbox and engine, coolant, not power steering, and said clutch. Once all that's done, I'll turn the key, and then all these question marks will come into play, and probably. It won't start but then we can start poking around and pulling out the hair that i don't have trying to work out why that oem ecu isn't happy that i've disconnected 50 percent of its uh, inputs and outputs um so yeah that's where we are let's crack crack on i've got a couple of things to talk about in this video which aren't directly related to this but i will uh, overlay them with some some doing stuff so let's crack on with the next task, which I think we're gonna start having a look at the shifter and the power steering yet again. Lego. Let's have a little look at this bad boy. So I posted this on Insta, like I said, a lot of people seem to think that because it's genuine Lotus parts, it was a supercharger pulley for a, you know, an Exige style supercharger. Sorry to disappoint. There is absolutely no way we're getting a supercharger in there because it goes here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be quick enough as it is if I ever sort that out. No, this is an idler pulley to get rid of the power steering pump. This is the spacer that takes up the space where the pump once was. And this is a 2ZZ that I prepared earlier exactly for this demonstration. So this bolt, hole and this bolt hole are where the power steering pump goes and it actually sits in, in that gap there so you can see if i was to put this like that it replaces the pulley 
and it takes a serpentine belt up there. Only issue is that would crush up the block. Wouldn't be good. Why? There's this little spacer tube. What's quite important, and that just slots nice and snugly, like that. Snugly wiggly. I've just been attacked by a drive shaft. Just like that. Deleted the power steering. Now, if anyone who's on here knows anything about Yaris's, it's quite a, quite a niche subject, I know. You could tell me how many turns the uh, non-powered racks are, lock to lock. I'd much appreciate it. I think are they are they electric racks, the non-powered ones. But yeah, if anyone knows, let me know. I'm going to loop the lines initially. Uh, after all that time bugging around last week, sorting out the sleeper lines, I'm going to pull them off and just loop it. But yeah, if you know, let me know. And uh, if you're interested, I can stick the part numbers for this in the description. If you want to depower your own Yaris 2ZZ rack. Now I say that out loud, seems a bit niche. Just kind of praying that I don't need to take the engine out to get those bolts out because uh, they might hit the chassis leg. So I'm gonna have a look at that. If you were in fact wondering whether you can remove the power steering pump from a 2ZZ that's been fitted to a Yaris, that's, that's I mean, that's a pretty common query, I think. The answer is no. You have to remove the drive shaft, which you can't see because it's dark, but there is no drive shaft in here and uh, then jack the engine significantly, uh, undo most of the engine mounts to get out, but that there, which again, you can barely see, is the idler gear. This is the uh, 6PK1420 belt that I originally bought, and it's all in there. So the power steering is no more. Hashtag lightweight, hashtag race car. I cannot explain how much of an absolute bastard that job was. Just got to put my looped line on. Maybe cry a little bit. And then we'll move on to the next job. But it does mean to do this. Yes. And because the uh, drive shaft's out, I'm gonna do this now. Woohoo! Rightio, I've been doing some bits and pieces off camera because let's be honest, this is boring for me. It's definitely going to be boring for you to watch. So, what we're done, I've plugged it around with the shifter. It's still not actually mint. Uh, I can't find reverse. So I, I've got first to sixth. I'm not 100% happy with it. I think I'm going to have a look for a Corolla assembly and just see if there's a means of fudging that in to make it a bit better. But that's probably going to drop down to after I've done fluids and got some gearbox oil and things in there just so I'm not just crunching through the gears dry and everything works a bit better, but I am gonna keep an eye on that. Uh, I think we covered that yesterday, the CV boot clips, throttle cable. Uh, I've run in the Yaris cable, and I've got this massive loop of slack. I've got a throttle that works now, but obviously that's not ideal. On the one NZ, the throttle cable actually roots right round the bay that way, and in, so it's quite long. Um, for the time being, for the purpose of getting the car running and testing it, I'm going to leave that, but there's going to have to be a proper solution found for that. I uh, haven't done the bonnet catch, we saw the power steering, clutch slave, so I have gone and hacked out the clutch slave, as you can see from the Celica, and I've got it bolted into the box. Obviously it hit the front cross member that I made for the front engine mount, so there's some modification to be done to that. But that's probably gonna work. I'm gonna have to do get my tooling out and flare this pipe and probably mate it with the flexi for the Yaris here. So I'll make that to there and then just run the lines along, along the chassis leg. And then it sort of joins up with this flexi here. So I just fudge that fudge that in one way or another again not the most interesting it's bloody freezing and i can't feel my hands so that's why this is all a bit rushed uh, i'm bugging around with the wiring again fairly ruthlessly just starting to hack stuff out 
I'm trying to clean everything out of this fuse box if possible because the idea would be if I can reduce this down to the point that I can actually put it into this fuse box which fits nicely which seems impossible at the moment but I don't think it is impossible you've still got all of the headlights this is basically the full Celica's worth of wiring coming out of here so hopefully for a long period of time you can reduce that down um, this is the stuff coming out of the ECU so that gives you an idea probably of sort of the volume that we're actually going to be looking at getting out of here loads of that that goes through the firewall is to come out as you can see started pulling that out um, but yeah that's where we are it's cold it's frustrating it's making me a bit sad doing this so the next video might be a bit delayed i'm out of the country unfortunately for a week or so with work so i'm going to miss a chunk of that plus as you can probably tell from this this work is not the most compelling for me and therefore like i said definitely not going to be for you so i'm trying to think of something to do in the meantime to sort of combat that i need a new daily comment down below what you think would make a sick daily i'm thinking 330i touring preferably manual which is rare as anything uh, and maybe we'll do some modding on that i've got the next project lined up as well but i need to get rid of that Celica before we can crack on with that so yeah it's a toughie um yeah thanks for watching until next time have a good one and i'll see you then